Hello. Uh, Excuse me. Oh God, that was bad. Canada Dry. Does it? Okay. So you okay. are good. Let's go. All right, guys. Welcome to the show. What's up, Corey? Let us know where you're from, what you're doing. Hola. Que pasa? Hello. Joseph. Hello. Hey, Nando just joined. Oh, that's me. Yeah, I know, right? So, unbeknownst to you. Hola, Ricardo. I, uh, what's up, Tim? Good rip, Dean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. Hello. So, I was thinking about it this weekend, as I often do when I have uh, those moments of mind-numbing exercise that I have to do. Okay. Just the hour, two-hour ride I had to do. Uh, you know, we call this the Facebook Live Show, which is really yep. kind of uh, Oklahoma City. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Okay. Anyways, um, and you know, we call it the Facebook Live Show, which is really uh, it sounded good in the beginning. You know, when we start first started doing this, essentially we were calling it what it was. It was the Facebook was Live Facebook Show. Live. It was us yeah. talking to you. But that's just it. We're talking to you. We're talking car stereo. It's 45 minutes to an hour of car stereo talk. Yes. So, starting tonight, I'm hopefully by the time this... Uh, is there a way you guys can turn down... Turn the volume up? up. No. Huh. Is it that quiet? Maybe no. you have to turn it up. <laughs> yeah. No, man. I mean... Jason. Called New Dean and Fernando Show. Uh, all right, well, okay, so that was kind of the idea. So, actually, what we think we're going to do is we're going to name it Car Stereo Talk with Dean and Fernando. Dean and Fernando? Dean and Fernando. So, I want to make some artwork that says Car Stereo Talk, Dean and Fernando, instead of calling it the Facebook Live How about Show. They, if they have an, any idea, well, they're going to call tell it the Dean and Fernando Show. But yeah. I, I think Car Stereo Talk is, or Car Audio, car audio Talk. With Dean and Fernando. With Dean and Fernando. Uh, I want to make some artwork and rename the show that instead of the Facebook Live show because I just don't think the Facebook Live show really captures what this is. Uh, this is definitely a lot more fun than that. No, I can hear you fine. All right, okay. thanks, Maynard. Sorry, Tim. We're trying. And if that was a rib from earlier in today, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Let me just check the mics real quick, make sure it's plugged in all the way. Yeah, it's plugged in all the way. Let's do that. Let's turn it out a little bit. Yeah. Good evening, Clint. Good What's evening, up, buddy? Clint. I wonder if I should try swapping those two. Huh. Huh. Hello there, thirsty for knowledge. Okay, so before we get going on with your Q&As, we had a Q&A sent in to us that was kind of interesting. Yes. Uh, it was from Keith. Got it? Keith. Yeah. Essentially, to summarize, Keith has a 2017 Toyota 86, which is telling me he's from overseas. The 86 here is called the FRS. It looks Best like the FRS. Out there. Yes. Maybe I'm um, going. You guys sound great. Mm, okay. Volume. Um, <laughs> so, his mechanic slash tutor friend strongly cautioned him that electronic interference is an issue with these cars, such as cheap aftermarket headlights, taillights, causing issues with the ECM and resulting in erratic behavior and poor engine management. Okay. He said to make sure audio equipment is fully isolated and or filtered on power and ground to avoid any possible issues. So this brings up a couple interesting topics. For one, the lighting thing. And I can understand where the, uh, Keith from Phoenix. That's him. Need an amp and speakers to hear you better. <laughs> um, oh, that's Keith. Okay, yeah, so we're, Keith. we're all right, Keith. So that's what we're, we're talking about. Going to your question. So, in Phoenix, if he's in Phoenix, how do you have a Toyota eighty six? Well, that doesn't maybe. make sense. Well, because the eighty six is is the FRS, which well maybe they call it like that. Do you call it okay, Tim? So, anyways, the Toyota. Back to the back. Regardless of the car you have, this is an interesting topic. Because it's a 2017, 2017, 16s, 15s, cars in general, um, they have a lot of system managements now, all the way down to the basic of light bulb. So changing out light bulbs uh, can be a problem, as we well know. Yeah. We don't do uh, HID conversions do because yeah. it's it's a headache for one. Uh, hell, even changing your tires, if you don't reset your TPS sensors, which is your tire pressure sensor, you get that stupid light in your dash forever. What's up, Steve? 
So I can see where the mechanic is coming from and that, yes, you get all kinds of... Um, yeah. Yeah, I was oh. trying to read that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, okay. get, you get all kinds of issues that can arise from that. Not fatal issues to the car, just like the car. It's like the car doesn't see the light bulb anymore, so it tell you know it trips the yeah. light in the computer and says, "Hey, you know what the hell's going on?" This is an issue going forward. This is the car manufacturers trying to boot out you guys, the consumers, and us, the aftermarket installers, from putting things in cars. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, there's people like Pack and iDataLink and Metra and Skosh whose whole business model is designed around interfacing with these factory Three. cars. Yeah. So, though it's taking more time from release date of the car to the actual release date of the... Um, yeah, we yeah, do. Right here. Yes. Yeah, flip that, flip that. Anyway, sorry. It says, do we, do y'all do any flip down? Yes, we flip do. Downs. Yes, we, we, Alpine and... Audio Alpine, box. audio box. I feel like yeah. I'm just... Ah! Anyways. Back to the original question. Yeah. So it, it's taking longer for these manufacturers to go from when the car is released to when we can actually put a radio in it because there's a lot more work that needs to be done. But you can bet your bottom dollar <laughs> that, yes, these, these businesses are all in business and they want to make money, yeah. so they're going to make interfaces yeah. that work on these cars. ¿Qué tal, Milton? ¿Cómo estás? Now, the light manufacturers, on the other hand, are not. They're just generic guys out there making light bulbs with connectors. And yeah, I could see where it causes all kinds of problems in the right. cars. Now, as far as the, the other part of the question when they were talking about uh, make sure that the electronics are properly filtered and stuff like that, the, the, the throwback on that is if you buy a brand name radio, so if you buy an Alpine, you buy a mm -hmm. Pioneer, you buy a Kenwood, you buy a Sony, I'll even go as far as to say Clarion. Yeah. Um, or JVC for that matter, you're going to get a quality product that is not going to cause you any issues with your aftermarket electrical system as far as filtering and noise go. Yeah. Because who do you think is building these products for these aftermarket, for these cars? You know, Alpine builds a ton of factory stuff, Pioneer Daniel builds a ton Arnie. of factory stuff. Um, the largest of them all is Harman International, which is JBL Infinity. All those guys, mm -hmm. they make tons of aftermarket electronics. Most of the electronics in the Dodge are made by Harman, which is funny because if you remember a year or two ago when that car got hacked, the car that got hacked and was, you know, stole, that was a Harman radio that allowed that to happen. Not picking on them. Need a pro tip Walt Disney World or Disneyland? Oh, Magic Kingdom or Disneyland? Ooh, that's a tough one. Why is your phone ringing? Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so I hope that answers that question, kind of. I mean, I know we kind of went around that. Um, the uh, so, so, I don't think it's as big of an issue. Mecha okay, there's a war going on in the car audio industry, and that's us against every mechanic on the planet. They hate us, and we hate them, because they don't understand what we do, and we understand what they do. It's <laughs> really simple. what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, you know, so, no, just like you said when you, you installed the car in your 2014 and never had any issues, it's going to be the same in your 2017. I mean, goodness gracious. We just worked on today. Uh, was, was 2017. It, the live earlier today was a 2017 Chevy pickup truck. Yeah. GM has been, it, it, as far as the level of complexity and computer system in cars, mm -hmm. GM smokes the shit out of all these guys. They're, they've been doing this the longest, and their stuff is the most whacked out electronical crap on the planet. We can still put stereos in there with no problem. So, okay, so hope that that helped you out a little bit on that. We can always address that issue later, maybe in a question of the week or something like that. No problem. Okay, Jason, uh, before we get to the other car audio questions, good question. Magic Kingdom or Disneyland? That's tough, because I'm a... Disneyland season pass holder. That's if you guys caught the vlog where me and Haley were driving around in the cars. We go every month. Um, that was a two-day weekend for us. Last summer, uh, we flew to California for four days to go to Disneyland. With that being said, Disneyland and California Adventure was fun as could be. I had a blast. 
It doesn't hold a candle mm -hmm. to Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom consists of four parks, two water parks, and a bunch of hotels. Man, no. And they have the Disney Springs, which was formerly Downtown Disney, which Mag Disney, the California has too, but it's like this big compared to this big. So, no, if you're going for maximum bang for your dollar, yeah, I would definitely go to Magic Kingdom. However, with that being said, if you want to come in the summertime, I would go to California. Because yeah. the weather in California in July is a hell of a lot better than the summertime <laughs> here. There is a way to do it. It involves getting up early in the morning, taking a nap in the afternoon, and going back at the end of the day. Because between the hours of 12 and 4 in Florida, you don't want to be walking around the Magic Kingdom or Epcot or Hollywood Studios. And you definitely don't want to be anywhere near Animal Kingdom. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, We're going to get back to good, uh, good. Car Stereo Talk. That's good. <laughs> Everything is good. Was... Um, okay, so Jesus is like, where are we going to see an install with those Phoenix Gold shallow subs you always talk about? As soon as they... We haven't done one? No. Really? I, I don't know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, if you guys have watched the vlog at all, you've kind of figured out that when it comes to our... When we get to put stuff in it, when we install stuff in a car, a lot of the times, well, we don't have any say in it. Nothing. Paul gets in these ruts, so to speak, where he picks a product and he just runs with that product. So, like, he gets it on his head. Like, last week, it was definitely the kicker amplifiers. The kicker amplifiers. We installed yeah. a ton of kicker amplifiers last week. And that was just because that's what he was thinking about for that week. It makes no sense to me. It's just what happens. Yeah. Uh, lately, he's been really, um, which is fine with me because I love the way they sound, the new Comp RTs. Yeah. Uh, they sound amazing. It's finally, uh, Kicker has made a really nice shallow mount woofer that sounds good. It, it Basically, the CVT is, and this is, is <laughs> like, wow. Way to go, guys. Jazz. California lines are three hours long. <laughs> okay, run. Or right, I'm gonna touch the Disney thing. Okay, so Magic King or in Anim Animal Kingdom just opened that new Pandora thing for the Tim Cameron movie with the big tall blue people. The wait for that line is four hours. Okay, four hours. It's a mile from where you get on the line to where you get on the ride. Luckily, because we're season pass holders, we got a special premiere you know access all behind the scenes it still took us 20 minutes to get on the ride but it took us forever just to get to the line it's a mile so yeah four hours so no man <laughs> lines suck anyways okay all right eric um he say i do both i do mechanic and install work i'm not saying there That's aren't good. you guys out there there, there are mechanics and installers out there, and most of those guys, that, like I have a couple friends that are that, yeah. and those are the guys I call when I'm in a pinch, you know, it's like uh, Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, Andrew, he's been on here before. Andrew is a tech among techs, this guy, yeah. he's the funniest guy in the world, he has no problem tearing, about, tearing down a GTR to the tiniest nuts and bolts and rebuilding the car and going, oh man, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, he, he can do it all, he's a... Uh, you know, Coon, uh, I was gonna say Coon Tosh's Lamborghinis, Ferraris shows my age. He he tears these cars apart, and it's no big deal for him. And he also understands how to do stereo. When he has a headache, he calls me. When I need car help, I call him. So they're yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it's just there. when you go to the Chevy dealership and you got Hank the mechanic. That that's all he's been doing since whatever. He don't know nothing about audio. Okay. All sorry. right. So Joseph, Joseph Hernandez, say I just hooked up my 2017 Tahoe, and with Bose that was easy. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Man, our Japanese cars are a lot easy for aftermarket radios. They are. So was he saying? That was. Or yeah. is that a question? Is there a question mark? That's, no, that's not a question mark. They are. Okay. So. Depends. <laughs> I tell you, if anyone, if there's ever, if, if there's a Japanese person out there that can help people out when it comes to... Giancarlo, hello, man. People buying the the, pine, the Japanese par, Pioneer models, the 
can of toes. I can't even put it. starts with a C. Cause... Anyways, everyone, the most number, the question we get a ton is when people buy their cars in Japan and they come with Pioneer radios that are the Japanese models, and always they want to ask, how do you turn it to American? And it's like I, I have no idea. I can't, I can't read it. I don't know. But yeah, yeah that's. I get that right. question about once a month. All right, Sherman. Sherman say, hey, Dean, correct me if I'm wrong. When I bought my 2014 Kia Soul, I put an aftermarket radio. There wasn't anything around for me to keep my OEM backup camera. Is there anything now? There wasn't anything back then, and there still isn't anything now. But it's not that hard <laughs> to do. Um, it's it's wire. It's there. It's all there, right behind the harness. There's a. Uh, it's a six volt camera, mm -hmm. and it's not a 12 volt. So you need a 12 to six volt converter. And then you just need a uh, you just need a solder and an RCA. Um, what you may want to do, because they might make it now, is Skosh has camera retention harnesses, and I know they make a couple for Kia and Hyundai. I would check Skosh. I, I believe Skosh. Skosh. Sorry, the, the prefix you want to search for is CRT. So if you if you go to Skosh's web page go down find find where the dash kits are they have a search tab mm -hmm. if you type in crt it's going to pull up all the parts that have crt in the model number and that's their, their their model numbers for their backup cameras so if there is a retention one they're going to have it metro has also started updating their catalog so go to metroonline.com see if they've got one yet if neither one of those have them there again it's a six volt output if you still have the factory radio you can do it it's not that it's not totally hard um, I'm trying to think if we have that video up or not in the end it be in, in from the install bay retaining the factory backup camera probably yeah I don't know but um, yeah at the end of the day it's you, it's four wires yeah four wires all okay. right Eric uh, what's the biggest flip down flip down screen you install? Uh, I don't like to go any bigger than the 13 inch, mainly for weight. Um, I know there's some inexpensive brands out there that make like a 22 inch or a 30 inch or some. The hinges always break and so do the clips. So I mean if we're going for actual like form and function, daily driver, kids are going to be using this thing, mm -hmm. a 10 inch is perfect. Uh, the 10 inch is not going to totally kill you with you can't see behind you. The 10 inch is also small enough so if you need to reach behind and whack a kid you can. Um, the 13 inch is a little nicer because it is a little bigger so if you have like two rows like we just did the Odyssey two weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, or a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, two weeks we put ago. a 13 inch in that because they have four kids so that's dual row seating so the 13 inch worked out pretty well. But that's it. That's all I do. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to go any bigger than that because, you know, back in the day, yeah, we put 15 inch in all the time, and we had nothing but problems. It always broke. You know, this stupid clip right here would always break, and this would fall yeah. apart. And, yeah. You know, too they're heavy, made a little right? better now, but man, it's still too heavy. Okay, this is good. Uh, Maynard. 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 Yeah, I heard it's not possible to add subwoofer, subs, and am um, to a 2016-17 Dodge Charger. Challenger with U Connect system. Have you guys installed? Yeah, you can do that. that. That's not a problem. There's a couple things going on. In, okay, <laughs> there's a couple different things going on in Chrysler vehicles now that make life interesting. Mm -hmm. For one, you have an amplified system that has load resistance built into it. Now, this is a topic that we're gonna just kind of graze over, but it's a really deep topic, and I don't want to spend too much time on it. Okay, so. The way these amplifiers are built is they need to see a speaker. If they don't see a speaker, like the speaker blows, what they do is they, they when, when the amp turns on, if it doesn't see the resistance the speaker puts on to the amplifier, it shuts off that channel to protect that channel from blowing because of a damaged speaker. Now, when you take the speaker out of the car and you hook up a line level output converter to get sound, the radio's doing the same thing. The radio's putting out its sound, it sees the line output converter, it sees there's no resistance there, so it shuts off the amplifier. Mm -hmm. So now when you go to turn on your radio, you get no sound because there's no resistance coming from the speaker into the amplifier. Those are called, uh, it's, it's called a load. So load. now, line output converters come with loads built into them. 
Stinger, I'm sorry, Kicker's LOC comes with like a 4 ohm load on it. So it will, as soon as you hook that sucker up, it, boom, turns anything on. The problem with the Kicker one is that because it's 4 ohm, you really don't want to use it in conjunction with another 4 ohm speaker, like if you're just coming off, which you wouldn't need it for that issue anyways, because now it's going to make a 2 ohm load. Anyways, we're getting complicated. Stinger with the pack LP7, they have a load in it too, which is the minimal amount that they thought they needed. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is the radio manufacturers changed it a little bit, so now the load that's in theirs isn't enough to trigger it. And then Audio Control didn't bother to put anything in theirs, and it was like, oh, crap. So, what has changed since then? For one, uh, you can just go online, buy a resistor, put it across the two speaker leads, and it'll turn on just fine. Audio Controls addressed the issue. They've actually made the issue the best. They've made a whole circuit that plugs into the input of all their products and will load the amplifier down um, so that it will turn on the output of the radio. Now, where all this becomes null and void, meaning it doesn't matter in a Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, whatever, is that if you've got a factory premium system, meaning there's some form of a Dre, Beats by Dre, Infinity, Boston Acoustic, Alpine, because there's like 10 different systems these guys have. If it has an outboard amplifier, then all you need is the Pack Audio uh, Amp Pro or the iDatalink's new version of the Amp Pro as well. What those are gonna do is those are gonna plug into the back of the radio, they're gonna digitally talk to the radio and make a full preamp output out of the radio. Six channel, four volt output. If you wanna know more about those, go to our the, go to the YouTube channel, look up, go to the iSimple Pack Stinger uh, playlist mm -hmm. and look for something that says Amp Pro. We have a Ford in there, but they make it for Ford and Chrysler right now. GM is coming and so is Toyota. But, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on in the Dodge. Needless to say though, you can do it. For some reason, something is frozen. What's frozen? They they lie. They say for some reason, like it's frozen. Okay. And Ed say the same thing. Eight seconds. Eight mm. seconds. Uh, eight seconds mm. of the live show. Right. So. Okay. Either way, if you missed yeah. that, because it was kind of a long rant, uh, if you missed that, just check it out tonight on on YouTube. And yeah, we'll, we'll go over that. Very much. Okay. Yeah, Nathan, say nice shirt. Oh, yeah, I was talking about pack and have a pack shirt. He's got a rockbird shirt. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, all right. So. Next question. Ernie, say I'm running speaker wire to components in the front and coaxials. Uh, in the rear, from the JL 900.5, it's 16 gauge OFC. Going to be a problem, or should I install something a little bit larger? No, 16 gauge is fine. 16 gauge is what we'd run. 16 gauge is plenty big. Don't need anything. So it, yeah, if you got a 900.5 JL audio amp and you want to hook it up to, and you run 16 gauge, that's 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 plenty big for just a set of components or yeah. coaxials for that matter. Uh, the subwoofer that has the 500 watt output, you're probably going to want to run 12 gauge. All right. When I'm installing a 300 to 400 amp to a factory replacement component. In rear coaxials, do you recommend using existing factory wire? How big is the amp? 300 to 400. 300 to 400 means that it's going to be a 50 to 75 watt by 4 amplifier. You're fine using existing power wire. Really, the only time you'd want to think about going up is like the previous question where we talked about the 900.5. 900.5 JL is about 100 to 110 watts a channel. I would recommend upgrading to that. We had that problem last week in the F250 where yeah. we were running the PDX V9, which is mm -hmm. the same amount of power as the JL Audio 900.5. Yeah, so. Mm, just saying. Minus. Think about it. Anyways, uh, so that's why we increased the size of the power wire in that yeah. car, so yeah. Yeah. So, under any possible, I have done. What? Anthony. Anthony say Maynard. Maynard? Maynard. Yes, so probably he answered that question for him. It's possible. And I have done in a 16 charger with the okay, last yeah, two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Chad, Chad, got two second battery under the hood. Should I use a fuse between the batteries? If you see what size? So that's a good question. Um, okay, so. 
paranoia is a fun thing, and that's the easiest way to think about this. You have a battery here, you have a battery here, you have a four gauge wire going between the two, and then you have your amps that go to the back, and you have a fuse that goes to the firewall. So typically what that fuse does is that fuse protects the, the wire when it goes through the firewall. So now you have two batteries underneath the hood and you have no firewall that they're going through. You just have a four foot wire that you can see the whole four foot wire of. So if you're gonna do a like if you're gonna do it the paranoid way, you'd put a fuse holder off of each battery so that where it melts, you know, where it's going across the engine block, no matter where it touches on the engine block, it blows the fuse on both ends. So if you put a fuse just on this one battery and it melts somewhere over here, well, it's still gonna catch that whole side of the car on fire and light this battery up like a Roman candle. It's just gonna save this one battery. So it all falls down to paranoia. If you could see the whole wire and where it's going and you've attached it and there's nowhere where it could possibly ever do any damage, don't worry about it. If you're worried about maybe you get in a front end collision and those batteries and the wire gets pinched, well, then you might get some sparky, sparky burnout at that point. It's just a level of paranoia that it comes down to. It's the same thing when you do a, uh, a, big, a big three upgrade, you have that alternator wire. You know, you, you should fuse that, but should you? Because you can see the whole wire. It's not like it's going to, like a piece of metal is going to come down and hit it or anything. So it's just a level of paranoia. Now, if you do want to add a fuse, you'd want to add something at least 100 amps or bigger. Because there again, the only purpose it's serving is to melt or blow if the wire shorts out. It doesn't need to do anything like that, anything else other than that. And that's a lot. The other thing too to consider is you're restricting a lot of the, the, amp, the amperage between the batteries going through those little tiny fuses. So, yep. But then again, you always see those cool pictures of those cars on fire and you wonder what happened. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Ashley, actually, is like Dean, this is David. Yes. With the pack BS41, help need as by email. I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Uh, as far as the VS41, yes, and I told you I'd get back to you, and I really wanted to. If We have been slammed last week, it, uh, so I didn't get a chance to do anything with that. Yeah. I tell you what, though, uh, email me again, and we'll, uh, we'll talk on the phone. I'm going to hook you up with a buddy of mine that actually works at PAC that's a lot better than tech support. You're a dealer, so I can do that. Um, so yeah, email me back again. I still have your original email, but it'd be quicker that way. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna talk to my buddy that actually works at PAC and see if he, he can we can get this figured out for you. So, Bill, Bill, my buddy Bill. Thank you for joining, Bill. Can I call you tonight, Bill? I have to ask you some questions. I read an article today that I need some uh, information. information on and we're gonna be working late. So I was wondering if I could call you and ask you a few questions, please. Okay, so I'm guessing I leave the other question. What was the other question? The same. About, oh, the VS41? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So I want to, Shannon, I want to replace my factory speakers in my 2009 Chevy Traverse. Do I need to replace the amp also? Oh, it's got a factory amp? Is it Bose? Uh, I don't know. So the, in the Traverse, if it has a Bose system, then replacing the speakers can be problematic. So. We need to know more information. Do you have an aftermarket radio in there or is it the factory radio? If it's the factory radio, do you have the Bose system? If you have the Bose system, do you just have a blown speaker like one or two and you want to make it sound better? Those are all questions we'd have to ask. So if you have an aftermarket radio with a Bose system, then yes, you're going to want to pull the Bose system. You're going to want to put new speakers in it. If you have the factory radio going to a Bose amp and you want to replace the speakers, that's going to be tricky because they don't work. They don't play well together. Yes, yes it's, it's Bose. Bose. So yeah. they don't really play well together. Um, aftermarket speakers and Bose uh, really just depend. It's all factory. Okay, so it really is going to depend on what Bose system you have. If you just have the basic four, six and a halfs in a tweeter, then you can replace it. You should be okay. If you have the premium Bose system in there where it has the subwoofers in the front doors, no, that's going to be a tough one because that's a subwoofer. There's a mid-range. At that point, uh, sell the car. No, just <laughs> now, at that point, you'd want to upgrade the radio and, and do the whole, you're going to have to do the whole thing. So it yeah. really just depends on what Bose system you have. There again, if it's the basic six tweet rear speaker, no problem. You can just you know put some nice uh, speakers in there. Keep it's in mind, though, yeah. even though they're Bose, 
Uh, that is a premium speaker for them, so I wouldn't go with anything like a $49 speaker or anything like that. You're going to want to get something a little better depending on what kind of music you listen to. You know, check out the next, you're going to want to spend somewhere in the $100 price range on the speakers, maybe $120. No highs right. and no lows, must be bows. Yep. Yes, Jason. <laughs> well, I think I've told the story of, of Haley and I going in the bow store, and when we walked out, she was like, Dad, was that supposed to sound good? Yeah. It was like the proudest moment of my life. I was like, yes! <laughs> no, honey, it sounded like crap. Okay, I was just making sure. I thought it sounded, she goes, I thought it sounded like crap. I just, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to. I was like, no, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, okay, so David also, he's like, hey, can you also make a video on how you and Fernando make your band fuses holder? For the we month? do, I thought we had, we do have one. Didn't we have one? Yeah. yeah, we have a fuse holder, uh, we have a fuse holder video in the install bay. I think we did it about a month ago. But no, we'll add, since we're doing this weekly vlog thing, Okay. Uh, yeah, um, we'll add, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll film a, a film a few, we'll film a few of us building those to give you guys different it's, applications. It, everything is depends about the car, so. So we'll, yeah. we'll start, we'll film a couple of those with the weekly vlog and put them in there as we're doing, like, you know, like right last week we did a couple amp wires. Yeah. Um, we did a couple speaker replacements. Um, We'll, we'll film a couple of different cars of us uh, building those, the F Fernando Fancy Fuse Holders, so you guys can get an idea of the process that we go through when we build one of those. Um, which is, brings us to a good point. How did you guys like the vlog? Uh, I know it was obscenely long, and we're worried about that because uh, I think the three the Thursday to Saturday was like 45 minutes long. If any of you guys had a chance to watch it, let us know what you thought for sure. Go ahead. All right, so Michael say best shallow mount subwoofers for rap music. Uh, uh, for rap music? I mean, you know, if money's no object, the the Rockford T1 shallow is a really badass shallow mount woofer. The problem is, it's not anything you can jam underneath the seat because the front of the woofer is like two inches tall. So, yeah, yeah. I mean. That's where you run into the issue with a lot of these shallow mount woofers. Of the even space the, of your car. You know, even the new kicker uh, comp RTs like we were just comping about sound great for bass yeah. and, and rap music, but you know it's a tight fit up underneath the seat, so you know it, it's it's rough. Yep. Uh, but uh, you know, right now the two favorites are definitely you know we like the Phoenix Gold and we like the kicker comp RT. Those are the two shallow mount woofers we're going with. If you have the room, by by all you know, there you go. Get the get the. Uh, Get the Rockford T1. It's pretty impressive. All right, Jeff, what do you guys do with the Rockford amps when you set it up? Uh, do you guys make with the punch EQ or not? Seems like I don't get too much output without turning it up. Uh, when it comes to the punch EQ, yes. We always crank that sucker up, um, except for on the highs. I'm not a fan of the punch EQ on the highs. I feel that it really just kind of overdrives things. That's what the radio's EQ is for. I feel the punch EQ is also really nice when you're doing a high level installation because a lot of the times when you're doing a high level you just don't get that uh, sound where the punch EQ will help bring <laughs> bring some of that up. But no, we also we, we always use the punch EQ for, for sub. Definitely for sub. Okay, so Wesley, I have Pioneer 7800 BT and it says I need car keyboard to use app radio. Is there any better keyboard that will work? That doesn't even work anymore. My... <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't even work anymore. I, w I wouldn't. Yeah, there. It doesn't work anymore. You could buy the app, and it's. It's. I bought it. It doesn't work. That was. That was an old technology that they no longer are f are uh, supporting, and they haven't bothered to do anything like take it off the website. So, no, it doesn't work. Have you guys installed a pack? And Pro in the 2012 Explorer. Explorer. And what's the di Explorer? Yeah, and what's the difference between the 2014? Uh, well, they don't have the one for the older ones yet. It's only the newer ones. Okay. It's only the very new ones. So the Amp Pack Amp Pro doesn't. That's work. Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, the, the the Pack Amp Pro for the older vehicles isn't out yet, so um, we we haven't put one in because it doesn't exist. And, it, and and if you're doing a two, th yeah. Yeah, that's no. Haven't haven't done one yet. This does it's not <laughs> so, out. Actually, Marcus and Chad is like love the the long block. Okay. I love watching a work at night. 
Okay. Well, I mean, we're getting a lot of positive on it, so I, I mean, I you know, we're just gonna let it run the course and see how it goes. You know. D from DC. Hey D. Yeah. Crossovers on my four channel when using radio crossovers. Yeah. Uh, I think I missed when you answered my question. Where did I set my crossovers on my four channel when using the radio crossover? So there's two schools of thought on that. We've we've talked about this a lot. Um, we actually have it's a weekly. It's a uh, it's a question of the week where mm -hmm. we talk about this and really hammer it home. The the quickest answer for that is that the. The, if you're going to use the radio crossover, you don't have to use the one in the amp at all if you don't want to. If you're worried about somebody getting getting into your system and playing with it a little bit, go ahead and set your amplifier crossovers at like uh, a really high, like 80 hertz or something like that, that isn't anywhere where you're going to have your radio at, just mm -hmm. as a safety stopgap so that if someone goes ham on your shit, they don't uh, break your stuff. So, yeah. but yeah, or, you know, there again, you don't have to use it all. Like when we do the AVH Pioneer radios with um, the memory built into them, we very rarely set it up on the amplifier anymore because we just, you know, it's programmed in. If the battery gets disconnected, it's there. If it's a customer that we're worried about that they're going to just go crazy on it, then yeah, we'll set it at the amplifier. Uh, Marcus, who's better, access or PAG for steering wheel controllers? That just really comes down to personal preference as far as that goes. I hate access steering wheel controls and I'll, I'll scream it at the world. If you had me in access steering wheel controls, I pretty much want to gouge your eyes out <laughs> and bang your head against the wall. It just It's the most frustrating thing in the world. It doesn't make sense to me because I've always put in PAC audio steering wheel controls. And the opposite is true for guys that are, are the same. They understand the, the steering wheel controls that Access makes, and they love them, mainly because they feel they're easier. I don't know how that works because there's no, in, there's, it's no. So if you're asking me, I'll take a pack steering wheel control any day over an Access. I'll take a pack anything any day over Access. Access is a product that we carry as a necessity, not as anything we ever want to use. Right. That was not a glowing endorsement for them at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. so D is like, we'd love to know your thoughts on the kicker front row versus the audio control DQ61. That's a great question. The front row is way bigger of an animal than the DQ61. They're really not even the same beast per se. The, the kicker front row is to help you get surround sound. Um, it takes high level input, but it doesn't do any summing. It has really no equalization, per se. Um, so, there are two different animals. The DQ51 allows you to have the ability to go in and fix a system if it has crappy sound. So you can DEQ and EQ at the same time to get where you need to be to level out the, the nonsense and then as a bonus you can go in and add a delay to the passenger and the subwoofer which we've done many times and it actually works out pretty well if you really want surround sound then then go with the kicker front row for sure because it's going to give you that otherwise i would go with the dq61 and use that eq that it has to make the system sound better all right, so Donald, Donald say, what are your thoughts on the three-way, four-way, and even five-way coaxial speakers? Me, personally, I never heard a decent three-way speaker. So, that's a great question, and, and you know, it's funny, I, a lot of great questions tonight, guys. A lot of great <laughs> questions. Thanks a lot. Keep it up, guys. So, th <laughs> this is funny. This is, this is one of those funny topics that we should probably do a question of the week on. I, yeah. Manu okay, so here's the deal. For $80, I can sell you a three-way 6x9 that's got two tweeters and a mid-range. For $120, yeah. I could sell you a two-way 6x9 that has one tweeter and a 6x9. That's it. You know why? Because the tweeters that come in the three-way are made out of crap. They're just cheap paper or plastic. They're standard stronium-style magnets. It's just... And the reason why they do that is because those materials are easier and cheaper to work with than neodymium, uh, titanium, silk, beryllium, all these other exotic materials that these tweeters are made out of in the two-way. 
So, when you're buying a three-way speaker, you're buying an inexpensive product. So yeah, they don't sound as good. The tweeters are harsh, <laughs> they're, they're nasty, they have... Now, not they to hurt anyone's this. feelings out there that has a three-way speaker. There again, they're, you know, they're expensive. Now, there again, okay, so a three-way speaker that sounds amazing is the Hertz High Energy three-way speaker, okay, because they put two badass tweeters in there. Yes. It's also a 300 to $400 speaker. So with two-way, three-way, four-way, five-way, Pioneer makes a five-way. Plus it also, too, it also, it also as well depends on the market that you're in. Yeah. Okay. Five-way speakers are big fans. There's a, there's a certain minority that are big fans of five-way speakers. They love them. They come in and go, you got the five-way speaker? What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm not pointing to you at all. I'm not no. pointing to you at all. Not at all. But, you know, they, they feel that the, the more speakers in one, the better it sounds. So, no, that's not the case. Most of the time, your two-way is going to kill all that crap. Yeah. Okay. That's Good it. Good topic. People yeah. like that. All right. Uh, say, say. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, say audio bit. Audio is a bit weak through. Can't hear much. Well, he also say love you YouTube video and Facebook show. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the audio. It's kind of bizarre. I mean, it's not like we can mic it up any. I like the 10-way speaker. You like the 10-way speakers? Yeah. Well, yeah, you got 12 speakers. Put two six by nines in the back of your car, and you got yeah. ten speak ten speakers <laughs> back there. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you install my Pioneer way back in the 2010 on the Mazda. Uh, is that Mater? Oh. Mm, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. What was the question? Okay. <laughs> the CX9. There was no pack for cell phone control and the radio presets. And the CD next, either. Yes. Or is it possible now to replace my pack? Probably. Um, it's probably going to take a Mazda smart harness. Uh, you could go on to, Maynard, you could go on to um, bestkits.com, put in your year, make, and model. And if they have an RP4 version for that car, then yeah, you'll be able to retain all those features now. Yeah, I remember that. It was, it was a CX-9. No, it's a CX-7. No, it's a CX-7, not the CX-9. Pioneer Classic AVIC Z120 BT. Yep. Yep. Yeah, check that, and if they have it, then, uh, then yeah, you could swap those out and actually probably, yeah. Marcus, love the non-conductor wire. Yeah, speed wire. Speed wire is awesome. I just wish they'd make a 16-gauge version of it. It's really frustrating that they don't. Wow, it's gonna be like. Yeah, okay. Like a full so, yeah, Maynard, it's the RP4 MZ11. Should be the product that will work in your car now. You still have that car, man? It's seven years. What the hell? Upgrade. Time for a new one. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, definitely, Jason. I love those 6x9s. Those are my favorites. Funny story about those 6x9s. Yeah. You probably don't remember. We had a guy come in with a Beats by Dre system in his Charger, Challenger, Charger. Charger. I think no. Was it Challenger? It was it Charger? The baseball player. Yes. He had that stupid JBL amplifier with the EQ built into it. And so the Beats by Dre system in that car has a subwoofer in the rear deck, four six by nines, and six three and a halves. And we were like, let us take out all the three and a halves. And he's like, no, I want the three and a halves. I want it loud. I want it loud. And we're like, okay, fine. So we took the little JBL amplifier, we put it on all the three and a halves. Yeah. And we put a four channel, like a Rockford 600 by four, on four of the Hertz high energy six by nines. Now the reason why we set it up like that is so if we we could unplug the uh, the JBL amp and see how it sounds. So we let it, we tuned it all up, we set him, we, we said, all right, dude, here you go, rock on, man, sent him on his way, and came back the next day and he says, hey, can you do me a favor and just unplug the three and a half and let me hear it? I'm like, yeah, sure, unplugged them, and needless to say, they were never plugged back in again because those four six by nines sounded that good. Okay, Gabe, was it changing was it changing the stock thirty three hertz module to be twenty five hertz on the audio controls epicenter? What are the chances? Yeah. <clears throat> Probably changing changing chances. Let's say changing. 
What's the changing the stock 33 module to 25 hertz on the audio control up the center? I mean, we have the chips for them. I've honestly never done it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we have we have the chipsets. We bought the big box of chips. I see you, well, I Mike. Mike is like, I see you classic amps hanging up the install bay. Do you have any classic free air stuff? Do I have any what? A free classic free air sub from the 90s. An air saw? Air subs. Air subs? Yeah. What are air subs? Uh, so buffers? They say air? Air. Air subs. Oh, free air subs. Yeah. I said free air subs. <laughs> No, uh, uh, actually, no, I don't have any classic free air subs. The only free air subs we had back in the 90s were the Orion XTR free airs. A buddy of mine, Nathan, that works at PAC now, he put four free, four of the XTR free air subs in the back of his Bonneville. We built like a three-inch baffle, you know, like an L that, that encapsulated the whole back and flush mounted in the woofers. And I think he used two Orion Beasts to power each set. Uh, it was pretty impressive, but that was the only time I'd actually ever seen any free air subs actually work. Mm -hmm. And the one guy answered the question about the audio he says control. Says Gabe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, no, he said he gave the answer because Gabe asked, "Will I notice yeah. the difference?" And the guy said, "No." He said no. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. You probably won't notice a difference. What do you yeah, got? That's it. That's it. Um. You have the CX9 got four twelves on the four K with the four. Yeah, is that yeah. Maynard? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He had a Mustang too before that. That was uh, that was that phone call I told you about where um, I had to call Kicker and I said this amp isn't working because we weren't selling Kicker at the time. It was one of their big amps, and they said, "Did you run zero gauge to it?" And I said, "No, I didn't run zero gauge." Well, you have to run zero gauge to it. I'm like, dude, it's literally two feet of four gauge. Oh, no, no, it's not going to work unless you run zero gauge. I said, so you're going to tell me I have to run zero gauge, but you're not going to help me unless I run zero gauge. Nope, you got to run zero gauge. I had to hang up the phone, put a two-foot piece of zero gauge in. The amplifier still didn't work. I had to call him back and say, hey, I've got zero gauge in it. It still doesn't work. What am I doing wrong? Oh, you got zero gauge in it? It's not turning on? Yeah, there's probably something wrong with the amplifier. <laughs> Love you, kicker. Um... <gasps> That was back then. That was in the 90s. So no one there from the 90s probably still works there. That's okay. All right. What do you think of the Rockford 360 DSP? Hey, it's Tony from the UK. Yeah. I think I was... That was nice. <laughs> I was actually... It's funny. I was just having a conversation with a guy yesterday. I was asking about the YouTube channel. And I was like, yeah, we have this guy, Tony, from the UK that hasn't missed a show yet. Not and then not he not almost not. didn't make this show. That was rough. <laughs> Uh, what do I think of the Rockford 360? Yeah, uh, it's not a bad piece. It's pretty cool. Um, I think it's become one of those pieces that like Rockford just makes as a token piece, and and is like, man, what do we do with it now? We've had it for all these years. Uh, I like the revamp that they're doing, where now they're going to make it interfaceable. They're going to make, they're moving that software into one of the iData products, so that you'll be able to buy a. Uh, a 360 iData piece. Mm -hmm. I really wish they'd take the 360 technology and move it into the amplifiers. It's a great technology. It's not hard to do. They should move it into the amplifiers. They need to come out with six channel amplifiers. Right now, Rockford's focus isn't on car audio. Mm -hmm. It's on the sport utility market, which is where everyone feels like, oh, this is awesome. And it's funny, I was just reading an article today that Rockford signed a deal with I want to say Yamaha or Kawasaki. I don't remember which one because I don't. We don't have those. I don't do that. Sh to be a direct parts distributor to them. So basically, anybody that you know, any Rockford dealer like us that was selling to one of these little Kawasaki Yamaha dealerships is now pretty much cut out of the loop because they can buy direct from Rockford as yeah. a factory part for those products. So that's kind of amusing. But Rockford is spending a ton of time on that, and they just look at 12 volt as like. Yeah, those guys will just keep buying her stuff. Not to say they're not doing anything. I mean, they came up with that giant woofer, yay. Um, but they really, like I've said this a million times, they really need, the, the Power Series amplifiers need to be redone. They're old. They're they're just, 
the the punch amplifiers are great. Yes. The powers they need they need to revamp that line. They need a six channel. They need an eight channel. They need to build that processor into that amplifier with high level input. These are all things these amplifier manufacturers are starting to do. Hell, audio control has a six channel amp. Six channel. Amp. You know, for that reason, so you can do a three way set with the amplifier, not front rear sub, mid bass, mid tweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moving along, Rockford. Yeah. Get with the now. Okay. Pretty much. Alright, so Damien. Damien says, still trying to get on. Still frozen. Sorry, can't catch the Monday show. He can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, check out the show on YouTube tonight. Yeah. Alright, so... It's a cleaner broadcast there anyway. Cleaner. Sounds better. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's from um, Audiophonics. Who? Damien. Oh, Damien. Yeah. Oh, in Canada. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What's up? Damien. What's up? <laughs> Well, they That's are. It? They're way up from us. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So, Kate, I Dear have Paul, a couple please inter increase your internet budget. <laughs> Dude, let me, <laughs> tell, you, let, let me tell you what. I totally good. agree with you on that. <laughs> um, how did you come up with the name Five Star? Okay, so real quick history lesson. Paul, who is the owner, is from Ohio. Uh, they're Indian. They were born in India. He moved here when he was eight. His whole family came here. Uh, they opened a grocery store, they opened a car audio store, they had a video store, they bought a whole plaza, they eventually the electronics portion of the business took over. They're not the most creative guys when it comes to names, and I know this because they started two companies. They started Five Star Car Stereo, and they started American Bass. Yes, the American Bass that you know and love that makes loudspeakers, giant subwoofers, and the VFL series amplifiers. Yeah, Bob nice. is his brother, Paul and Bob started both of the companies. Paul got five star, Bob got that. That was the way they broke the companies apart. That's how he wanted to do it. For some reason, it was probably because in the phone book, if you put five stars in the phone book, you probably got there first. I'm sure it should have been AAAAA roofing at that point. AAAA <laughs> automotive. I don't know, but yeah. And if you go, like, he showed me some of the previous artwork. The logo is mine. This, this is my artwork here. Um, I, you know, that's what I went to college for. That's why I do electronics. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, not the most creative thing. You know, that's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I, what was I saying before that? Oh. Okay, Kate, I have a couple of 10 JL free air back in the Oh, we're talking 90s. about Damien. Yes. Sorry, Damien. Um, Grand Prix GT. And I pounded pretty hard. Wasn't gonna win any SPL competition, but it pretty it bumps pretty good. Grand Prix, yes. yeah. Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Grand Prix back in the day, baby. Everyone, yeah. you know, you had the Grand Prix, you had the Thunderbird, you had these monster trucks. You had the Lincoln Mark Eight or Nine, whatever it was. You jam yeah. those things full. So. Jail, man. Old okay. Bob from American Base. Hadn't talked to him in years. Yeah, that's Bob. Yeah, that's Paul's brother. Uh -huh. Yep. They have right. a third brother too, and he actually has a store up in Ohio still called Five Star. <laughs> no affiliation no at affiliation. all. No, not at all. No. Okay, so Luis, hey, what's up, guys? Quick question. I have a 2012 Dutch Journey aftermarket amp installed. Do you have to bypass the factory amp? And what adapters do I need because I'm using the stock head unit tanks? Um, no, if you have a Dodge Journey, that's actually data from the, uh, that's a, that's a non-variable voltage output out of a Dodge into an, after, if it's got, so if you have a factory radio and it has a factory amplifier, they're actually one piece. How it works is the factory radio has a fixed level, meaning when you turn up the volume here, the voltage output of that going to the factory amplifier does not change. It is not a variable voltage output, which is what a typical RCA output is. It's a fixed voltage output. And what it does is when you turn the volume up and down, the CAN bus system in the car, which is like a USB bus, goes from the radio to the amplifier, talks with the amplifier, and turns the output of the amplifier up and down in the amplifier. So if you have the factory radio, you have a factory amp, you have to keep them both. What you want to do is go after the amplifier, Tap in your high level, the low level there. Make sure you tap it into the speaker that plays the sub sound. We talked about this last week in the mm -hmm. vlog. Put your ear to the speaker, make sure it's the speaker you want. If it's playing highs and you're doing subs, that's not the speaker you want. Marcos, it's Serpent Vega out of business? 
Sirwin Vega is not out of business. Sirwin Vega is owned by... I think they're owned by the same people that own Diamond Audio right now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same company. Um, yeah, so no, they're not out of business. Paul, Paul is... Paul is Chad, to go. Small World. Yeah, Small American World. American-based VFLs are monster subwoofers. Yes, Maynard, they are. And they're a bitch to ship. Hey, here comes an FRS. <laughs> Funny <is>. thing. <laughs> There's one backing up right now. Awesome. Um, yeah. Is that all the questions? Do we have That's anything? all the questions. Did someone ask? I saw like at the beginning of the night, what's the best AVH radio? No. You sure? that was? I, yeah. I thought it was like question number two. I was like, go all the way up to the top. Question number two. Or three said or four. I could have sworn somebody asked that question tonight. There is a uh, welcome, da, da, da. No. No ABH. I know it's there. Have 2014 KSO. Uh, 2016. All right, fine. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, that was boring. So, anyways, I think we're going to call it a night there. We actually have a car we have to go finish. Uh, check out the vlogs. Uh, we do this every day. So, somewhere around 2, between 2 and 3, we try to go on live so for you guys. Any flip downs, so we'll accept Chromecast. Yeah, actually, um, no. Chromecast is funny. Not Chromecast, but you can do Fire Sticks. Uh, the Chromecast is odd. It may work. I've never tried one. I'll have to, you know what? I have a Chromecast. I'll have to plug it in. Most, if you have an overhead that has HDMI built into it, technically it should work. But the Chromecast is kind of like the uh, PlayStation or Xbox where it needs the authentication back and forth. And some of these units just don't have that. Hey, guys. Uh, anyone flash to any X61 or 6000. We do it all the time. Yes, I did one last week. Hey guys, does Pioneer have uh, short chassis decks? They only yeah. have a short chassis deck in the. That's not short chassis. They only have uh, CD. They have the the DEH, not not the video head units. They don't make a yes, short chassis yet. Yeah, it kind of sucks because there's no reason for not having one other than the cost. Really, the reason why most of these manufacturers don't have short chassis decks yet is because of the cost. Uh, the only people that had the short chassis decks was Alpine, and that radio was stupid expensive. That was the ILX uh, 007. 007. That was really, really expensive for what you got. I felt it, it was a great radio, kind of, um, but very expensive. And the reason why it was expensive is because the chassis was only built for that radio, and that radio was actually built in Japan. It was one of the only radios in a long time that actually came from Japan. It wasn't Korean. It wasn't Malaysian. It wasn't from Thailand. It was built in Japan. Very odd. Um, but the reason why we're not seeing these short, short chassis radios on the double dens is because of price. Uh, and that gives it Android Auto. What are we talking about? Have a good day. What did Marcus say before that? Has anyone flashes the NAX? No, a 6000 will not have Android oh. Auto. Okay, that was the question. 6000 is a 6 inch screen. In order to do Android Auto, you have to have a minimum 6.4 inch touch screen. That's what the new Sony is. So the, the Pioneers are a 6.2 inch screen, so it's not ever going to do Android Auto. In Pioneer line, it has to have a 7 inch touch screen. Kenwood has to have a 7 inch touch screen. Alpine has doesn't even do Android Auto right now, so it doesn't matter. Um, really, the smallest screen with Android Auto is going to be the Sony 6.4. Okay? Perfect. All right. You guys have a great night. Check us out tomorrow. Check out the vlog. All right, let's go back Check to this work. out tonight if the audio sucked. We're going to go back to work. We'll see you later. Bye.